Hello crafty friends, welcome to this stamping September video. Today I'm going to make 10 birthday cards for kids and I've already done a bit of prep. I've got some smooth white cardstock here that I have stamped and heat embossed in gold with various sentiments. These are all just a selection of some of the birthday sentiments that I've got in my stash. You obviously use whatever you have to hand. I'm also going to be using these basic shape stamps. These are from L Studio and they're solids and outlines. For my colours I'm going to use Catherine Pooler inks. They are dye water-based inks. They're translucent so they layer over each other nicely. You get a nice blend of colours when you stamp one on top of the other. And I've gone for colours from the party collection, which seems appropriate for birthdays. They're nice and bright. We've got party dress, tutti frutti, chiffon, garden party, it's a boy, serenade and pixie dust. A nice rainbow. For card number one, I'm going to use this gold hooray. I've got the same stamp here and I've stamped it just in a random colour on some sticky notes which I'm going to use as a mask. So I'll use my scissors just to cut carefully around that. I'm leaving a little border but not too big a border and that can now go on top of there like that. And now I'm going to put my hooray down the bottom here and to the right a bit so that it's offset and I'm only going to put half of it on the card panel. Now I'm going to stamp in pixie dust, clean that off carefully and then with clean fingers I'm going to move that down so there's a gap between the purple hooray and the next one. That's one and a half centimetres I've dragged it down so each time I stamp this, I want to drag it down one and a half centimetres. So now I'm stamping with Serenade. This is a sort of indigo-ish colour. It's a bit lighter than indigo. And we're going to drag that down to three centimetres. Just check that looks right. Yep. And I'm going to just carry on doing that all the way down the rainbow. I'm actually going to swap Tutti Frutti out because it is very, very, very bright and very juicy and I think it's going to over dominate. So I'm going to use Bellini instead. I think that's tones in a bit more with the other colours. And now we've come to the masked off area. I'm going to stamp in Pixie Dust. Now we can take off that mask. So I've gold heat embossed a hooray on a piece of smooth white card and die cut it out with a stitched banner die. And I'm gonna stick that on there. And now that looks a lot more readable. It's clean, it's simple, it's lots of fun. And I think that would work for a kid's birthday card or any kind of celebration for the young or the young at heart. For card number two, I have punched a circle using my circle punch out of sticky notes. When I'm using sticky notes for masking, I normally use two together because sometimes some inks, if they're particularly juicy, will leak through one, but they're normally fine with two. And I'm gonna use this just to figure out where I want my circle because I'm going to mask off this happy birthday with the circle and that just helps me see where I want to stick this and in keeping with the circle theme I've got some solid circle stamps here and I'm going to ink them up Thank you. 
and I'm just going to create a kind of abstract circle pattern. Changing between the colours and changing between the sizes. So there we have a rainbow circle themed, bright, bold, bouncy, happy birthday card. Suitable, I hope, for a child or a teenager or whoever likes this kind of thing. It probably doesn't count as clean because there's not an awful lot of white space, but it's definitely simple and very easy to do. If you wanted to jazz it up a little bit, you could add some gold Nouveau drops, maybe dot those around. Or you could stamp some circles in embossing ink and heat emboss them with gold so they matched the sentiment. You could also just stamp in embossing ink and heat embossing clear as well to have some cleared glossy circles. That would be fun. So this card has got birthday girl in gold and I've just cut a little mask. It's not particularly straight but it'll be fine for what I'm doing. She says, same as last words. And I'm going to take these asterisks and create a diagonal. So I think for this card I'm going to stick with warm colours. Don't always need to do the whole rainbow. If you know the child that you are creating the card for you probably know what their favourite colours are, what kind of things they're into. I think we'll just throw in some purples as well on this one. Now we can take the mask off and see what it looks like and if anything else needs doing. I think on this one I'd also like to add an outline. So I'm going to use the pink again and the larger, where is it in the middle? I think it's the middle one. The outline stamp, I think that'll just add a little something different. Fills in some of the gaps without being too heavy. And again with this one, I think you could definitely add some Nouveau drops or something dimensional on top. And I might do that at the end. For this one, I'm going to do some repeat stamping again. And I've got a solid fishtail banner. And I've lined that up over the happy birthday. I'm not going to stamp that there. I'm going to move it down. And I'm going to stamp that in Serenade, because I think we're going to go cool colours on this one. And on one side, I'm going to add a bit of pixie dust and just dob it with a finger sponge to soften that edge. I've got a bit of an ombre ink effect going on. This time I've moved it down two centimetres and I'll do that each time now so that these coloured ones are spaced evenly. Now I'm going to stamp on some Oh Boy or It's A Boy. I think this is an It's A Boy stamp pad, ink pad. I've re-inked it with Oh Boy because I think Oh Boy is the newest version. And now I'm going to ink up this end with a bit of Serenade. Now I'm going to stamp it with green and then stamp this end with oh boy. But this time I'm going to ink up the other end of the fishtail. And then we have card number four. Do stick around to the end of the video because I'll show you the finished cards with the little embellishments that I add. And for my next card, I'm going to use stars, a mixture of solids and outlines. And I'm going to have a cascade of large stars to start with. Thank you. 
I'm going to have them curving this way and each time I put the star down I rotate it a little so that it's in a different orientation. So now I'm going to put the medium and small stars in and some open stars. And I'll clean that lot off again, get all the ink off those and then put them back on and stamp them again. And I'm going to carry on doing that until I've got the kind of pattern I want. I want it to be full, but not overcrowded. Now I'm going to do a bit of heat embossing on top of that. So I'm going to give it a good dusting with talcum powder and use the outline stamps. I'm actually going to use my mucky ink pad for this. I'm going to heat emboss in gold so the muck won't show through. But it does allow me to see where I've put my embossing ink. If I was going to emboss with something that was clear or translucent, I'd use my clean ink pad because I wouldn't want the muckiness of that to show through. So now I'll dip that in my gold embossing powder and then heat it with my heat tool. And there we have a lovely cascade of colorful and gold stars. Right, for this next card, I've got a gold have fun towards the left-hand side of my card panel. And I'm going to use some speech bubble stamps and an acrylic block to stamp some speech bubbles bouncing down jauntily over the left hand side. I'm going to overlap the stamping, get some nice blends of colour. I think I'm just going to skip the Serenade, the more indigo colour, because I don't think I've got enough room for all of the rainbow colours. I'm going to take the outline versions of these and just stamp a few in black. And I've put the large one over the large pink speech bubbles but I've offset it slightly just for a little bit of interest. This time with the medium one I'm not aiming for any particular colour or size. So I do love a bright colourful card with a bit of bling and some black, some black lines to really introduce a bit of contrast. So that's the stamping done on this card. I really like it. It's got lots of colour. It's got contrast. It's got bling. It's got energy and movement. I think this is card number seven. And I'm going to do something similar-ish. I've got some arrow stamps. And I'm going to use them to point at this lovely big gold, gold sentiment. You could do the full rainbow. Or you could pick a few colours. It's a good idea to start with your larger shapes first and get a few of those in. And then you can work down the sizes of your shapes from big to small. And you'll know exactly where to put your shapes, what gaps need filling in, what will fit. And 
again, I'm going to do some black outlines. Now I'm going to treat this with talcum powder to get any moisture, static, grease off of there. I'm going to take the medium arrow and stamp it around the medium size solid. I'm going to pop that in my gold, brush off any unwanted flecks and heat it with my heat tool. And now with my little outline arrow, I'm going to add a few pale grey arrows overlapping some of the colours. This is Pebble Catherine Pooler ink. It's not quite as strong a contrast as the black ink. And just as a final finishing touch, I'm going to use the small solid. Add some clear heat embossing. So now we've got some nice, subtle, shiny, tone on tone arrows. So that could go straight on a card blank or you could use, let's say, maybe a die to make that piece a square. Or you could use a circle die to cut out a circle from that and put that on a card. Whatever you fancy really. For card number eight I thought I would start with some black outline stamps and create some bunting across the front of my card. And now I'm going to add some colour to my bunting. And I'm going to start by adding some of the lighter colours. So I think blue and orange. So blue and orange are complementary colours opposite each other on the colour wheel. When you mix them, they will make a muddy brown grey colour. They kind of neutralise each other. But when you put them next to each other, they kind of bring out the best in each other. They look really nice together. So I think blue and orange would look good on this card. And I'm going to stamp them slightly offset again because it's actually easier to deliberately offset something than it is to get things perfectly aligned when using an acrylic block. So that's a nice light blue. I want to add a bit of pattern to my bunting. So I've got the serenade here, which is darker than the blue, and I'm going to ink up this rubber stamp. It's just a polka dot pattern. And then I'm going to take the large bunting stamp and press it on, getting good contact, but being careful not to wiggle it. So that should now have some serenade spots on it, and hopefully it's dark enough to show up on here. So now we have some spots on there. They're not perfect spots, but they look fine to me. And we'll do the same again with the other one. And for the orange, I'm going to ink up this stripy stamp. You don't have to use rubber stamps for this. You can use any stamps. I think photopolymer will work just fine. So the party time might look a little bit lost on there. I think it's okay though, because as a recipient and the way you look at it when you hold a card you'll be able to see it and tilt it in the light to see the gold so I'm quite happy with that one. For this card I'm going to mask off the sentiment area and I'm going to stick with pink and orange I think at this stage anyway and stamp on some hearts but I'm going to do multi-generational stamping where I stamp once and then stamp again without re-inking and then stamp again. When you cross over a mask when you do this, you want to press down so that the ink goes right up to the edge of the mask. But also, let me see, if you do a second generation from that original stamp, you can see that where it was on the washi tape, it's still got lots of ink left on here and only the bottom half where it touched the paper was second generation as it were. So if you're using a mask press firmly to get that nice crisp edge and then if you're crossing over the mask 
clean your stamp, stamp it off on another bit of paper before re-inking for the multi-generational stamp process. So you could stamp off on there and then go on to there. So now we'll go down a size. So now for the orange in the middle size stamp. Now for the little one. Might do just a few third generation, maybe even a fourth down here. So this isn't going to be a very clean card. It's not going to be much in the way of white space on this one. And I think I'm just going to add some grey outlines for a subtle bit of difference and variation. Now I'm going to carefully and slowly pull back the washi. And I think I'm happy with that. I might add some nouveau drops to that once it's on a card front. So check back at the end of the video to see how I finish this one off. So for this card, I have used this stamp's coordinating die to cut out a mask. So like I did with the circle earlier, I'm going to use this to figure out where I want my mask. So that should hopefully cover really accurately. And I've got some tag shaped stamps here. I'm inking this larger one up with 7 8 and I'm going to try to get it on here fairly straight so I'm going to put my head right over but I'll cut that a bit out for you. It's quite splotchy. If I used a stamp positioner I could very easily stamp that a few times to get a really smooth stamped image but I quite like a splotchy look from time to time. So I'm going to echo that one down here, pressing quite firmly so as to get around the edge of the mask fairly well. And now a bit of purple, this is pixie dust, and I'm going to stamp that up here, overlapping this one here. And the same down the bottom. And for this I'm going to use the Oh Boy. I've got the outlines for these two. So I'm going to use some party dress to put an outline around the big one. But as usual, I've offset it. And I think I use the party dress for all of the outlines. And I think I'm going to add some gold heat embossed stars just to bring a bit of that gold up the top. And for a bit of something extra, I might add one or two down there as well. And I think I'm very happy with that. I like the colours, I like the tag shapes, I like the offset lines, the different coloured lines and the extra little bits of gold. And I like the masking around here. So these tags look like they're behind. If you didn't want to do masking, you could always leave stamping your sentiment to the end and you could stamp that on a separate piece of card. If you've got a coordinating die, you can use that or use scissors to cut it out and then stick it over your tags. That would give you a little bit of dimension and texture, which would be nice. Right, I'm gonna pop these all on card blanks and add a few little finishing touches. So stick around for another minute or two if you'd like to see how they turned out. So card number one, I have decided to leave as is. I really like the clean and simple lines of this. I don't want to add anything else that would distract from those nice clean lines. So this card with the circles, I did decide to add some Nouveau drops and put three down here and five up here, two clusters of odd numbers and in a diagonal so that there's a sense of flow because the pattern of the dots was kind of going in that direction as well. And I do like how the gold is outside of this area as well. And you've got that little bit of depth and dimension. For this one, all I did was add some white Nouveau drops, a couple on each banner, 
and they have tinted ever so slightly because as they dry the white nouveau drops they absorb color from the ink that you put them on and so they tint that color and i think that's a really nice look it's a great way of toning your nouveau drops in very subtly to the thing that they're sitting on and again with the birthday girl asterisks card i simply added gold nouveau drops in some of the spaces in between the asterisks to fill up the space and to bring in that gold and the gloss and the dimension. I decided not to add anything else to the star card. Again, I think it's because it's quite angular. There are lots of lines going on, even though we've got this curve and this kind of curly font sentiment. I didn't really feel that this needed anything extra. Also because the outline stars, some of them are gold, so the gold is spread around and is sprinkled about nicely. I did add Nouveau drops to this gold ones again for the same reason, to fill up some space, to add some bounce, some energy, some gold, some dimension, some gloss. So even though this is quite chaotic, we've still got lots of lovely white space here, which just helps that breathe i think it doesn't look too busy with the party time card because there's quite a lot of color behind the sentiment i wanted to draw the eye to this area so that's what i use the nouveau drops for here I've just added gold nouveau drops around the sentiment with my arrow card i decided to add white nouveau drops but just on the white card so they stay really really white and again they just bring in a bit of movement but also some balance where there were empty spaces there's now a little drop which just fills everything out nicely for the heart happy birthday card i added three white nouveau drops here and three slightly smaller ones here just brings in a bit of a diagonal there and again draws the eye to this empty space and this gold and finally the happy birthday to you with the tags and the stars i've left it as is i don't think it needs anything else it's very regular very angular apart from this bouncy sentiment and i just find that really appealing right i do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with stamps that you already have some really basic shape stamps and outline stamps as well as birthday stamps i'd really love to know which one of these cards you might like to replicate or take inspiration from do let me know in the comments and if you want to see more from me please subscribe and ring the notification bell and i'll see you back here very soon for another stamping september video thanks for watching bye for now